Joan Baez is one of the legendary voices of American music. She is also a decades-long advocate for social justice. She is a member of both the folk and rock and roll halls of fame. In the early 1960s, she was regarded as the first lady of folk music. At this time, she was notable for championing the early career of the then-upcoming singer-songwriter Bob Dylan. She introduced him to her fans by recording his songs and taking him out on tour with her. Despite all of the adoration that she received, Baez never took herself so seriously that she couldn't take the time to be photographed clowning with 1960s music icons Bob Dylan and the Rolling Stones. But before those heady days, she was a resident of the Inland Empire in the 1950s. She attended elementary, junior, and senior high schools in Redlands, California. Joan was a child of immigrants. Her father, Albert Baez, was born in Puebla, Mexico in 1912. As a boy, his family moved to the United States, first to Texas and then to New York City. Baez's mother, Joan Bridge, was born in Edinburgh, Scotland in 1913. As a girl, her family also immigrated to the United States, settling in Madison, New Jersey. She met her husband, Albert, in college, and they married in 1936. Pursuing his interest in mathematics and physics, Albert Baez earned both his bachelor's and master's degrees by 1935. In 1950, he earned his physics doctorate at Stanford University. Later that year, Baez moved his family to Redlands after he accepted a professorship at the University of Redlands. Joan had been born in 1941, her younger sister Mimi in 1945, and her older sister Pauline in 1938. In Joan's 1987 memoir, And a Voice to Sing With, she wrote about her Redlands years. She recalled that as a youth in the city, she felt like an outsider. She said, So there I was with a Mexican name, skin, and hair. The Anglos couldn't accept me because of all three, and the Mexicans couldn't accept me because I couldn't speak Spanish. Her pathway to acceptance was music. She explained, It was the sense of isolation, of being different, that initially led me to develop my voice. I was in the school choir and sang alto, second soprano, soprano, and even tenor, depending on what was most needed. Mine was a plain little girl's voice, sweet and true, but stringy as cheap cotton thread, and as thin and straight as the blue line on a piece of binder paper. Encouraged to try out for the school talent show, she passed the audition and sang Earth Angel, and as an encore, Honey Love. This was her first public performance. Of the experience Joan wrote in her book, the fact that I didn't win the prize I'd been expecting dampened that day only a little. For all the anxiety, I knew I'd been really good and that in some strange way, my peers loved me and were proudly claiming me as one of their own, as someone who truly belonged to Redlands High School. Her confidence boosted, she appeared in the role of Titania, Queen of the Fairies, in a production of A Midsummer's Night Dream, staged at the Redlands Bowl. By the late 1950s, Joan's father was now teaching at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. After she graduated from high school and enrolling and dropping out of college, she launched her folk music singing career in Boston and Cambridge, near where her family was now living. She was signed to Vanguard Records and released her first album in 1960 at the age of 19. In 1962, she appeared on the cover of the November 23rd issue of Time magazine. The magazine's feature story covered the folk music boom in America. The Time magazine cover drew the interest of the Redlands Daily Facts newspaper. It ran this story and photo in the November 21, 1962 edition. Joan Baez would return to the Inland Empire on February 27, 1964, to perform in her old hometown of Redlands with afternoon and evening concerts. At the request of one of her former Redlands High School teachers, she gave an afternoon concert at the Clock Auditorium on the campus. 
1964 Rudlands High Yearbook reported, As she began her performance, she remarked that in junior high, she had sat in the third seat in the balcony. Then she began to sing and the audience fell silent. The soul sounds echoing in Clock Auditorium were that of a guitar, a tapping foot, and the pure, clean tones of Joan's voice. Student Mary Frances Lenker Petit attended the concert and in a 2012 interview in the Redlands Daily Facts newspaper said, I don't remember all the songs she sang, but I do remember very well. For her final song, she asked us all to stand, hold hands, and sing along with her, We Shall Overcome. To say she brought the house down is putting it mildly. In the evening, Baez gave a memorial chapel concert at the University of Redlands, where her father once taught. In an article that appeared in the February 29, 1964 edition of the San Bernardino Sun-Telegram newspaper, reviewer Charles Perlee reported that the hall was filled to more than capacity, with some 100 members of the audience seated in chairs set up on the stage. Baez opened the concert with the song, O oh Freedom. Among the other songs she performed were Kumbaya, Turn and Turn Again, Blown in the Wind, With God on Our Side, Fare Thee Well, Birmingham Sunday, All My Trials, and Mary Hamilton. She closed with Hush Little Baby. In the audience were her sister Mimi and her mother Joan, who had flown in from Paris to witness her daughter's homecoming appearance. Joan continued to perform until her 2018-2019 Fare Thee Well tour, after which she retired from the road. When she was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, she said, I want my granddaughter to know that I fought against an evil tide and had the masses by my side. When all of these things are accomplished by music of every genre, the fight for a better world, one brave step at a time, becomes not just bearable, but possible and beautiful. Thank you again. In January 2021, Joan Baez celebrated her 80th birthday and an over 60-year career in music.